which is why this might be a slightly jilted kickstart. Right, I can't see my video. It's live, it's live, okay. So I'll start talking before it uh, turns a bit strange. Okay, so slightly different video than normal. Uh, typically I would be just noodling away on some of my synthesizer bits and pieces, but I wanted to show this um, pedal board which I've got here, uh, which I ordered from Etsy. It's from a company called Ruark. Ruark, I think that's how it's pronounced, R-U-A-R-C-H. They're from Ireland. Uh, I got it on XC. Uh, as you can see, it's a wooden, uh, wooden type of board. It has uh, two connectors in there for the jack plugs uh, on both sides. So you can't see the one on the top. Get that into frame. Yeah, you can see they have them on both sides. So you can sort of have an in and then through your workflow chain um, on the uh, pedals and then out the other side. Um, I don't play guitar. So why have I got a pedal board? Well, I got it because I do a lot of bits and pieces with groove boxes, um, you know, like the things like the Korg Volkers and other bits and pieces where I want to use pedals to uh, add reverb and other different effects to the uh, to the sound on the, my sound chain. So I thought I'd get a pedal board to sort of tidy it all up. One of the reasons being power. And in here I've got a fuel tank uh, by a company called T-Rex, which is a... Uh, multi-strip power supply and the idea with that was I could plug that and it would keep it out of the way and I'd be able to feed power to various different devices which I'm going to show you in a moment actually. Um, so I've got a normal um, kettle style plug that goes into the uh, the bottom of the uh, of the T-Rex fuel tank there and this metal box on the bottom here this was actually from uh, T-Rex as well. They provided it to fit on their own pedal boards or you could fit them on this uh, or on any pedal board that you've got. So you just had to sort of bolt through uh, four sort of bolt screws that go through there. In fact, in fact feedback for T-Rex on that that you don't actually get a bolt to go through the back and the thread is on the um, this metal plate. So as you screw through the top of your pedal board the thread, if I bring it a bit closer to the video, you can just about see, um, the thread um, is inside this metal frame. So I, I would have thought it would be better with a washer and a proper bolt rather than putting the thread, uh, which probably once you've gone through there once or twice, isn't going to be great. But it, I mean, they work, it's gone on okay, it fits in nicely, and there's a hole here uh, on the side of this pedal board, the Ruark pedal board, which is allowing the power in. Also you can put other cables in there because I've got, um, I'll have MIDI cables and other bits and pieces running from my uh, MIDI stuff. I'll feed my MIDI cables through there as well, or directly to whatever the device is on the top. So um, yeah, you can see as far as Ruark go, nice solid wood build, um, neat sort of Allen keys in, in the base here where they're sort of holding the, the whole thing together plus this corner section that they've got on there that I'd certainly uh, nice and solid. Um, fuel, back to the fuel tank, yeah the fuel tank has a 9 volt uh, standard feed which is a standard pedal feed through there and they also have a 12 volt AC and a 12 volt DC at the end on this one here. And again, I'll show you where I was going to use those because I'm making use of that 12 volt. Uh, as well as this cable, and this is a special cable called a current doubler, which is again a T-Rex um, cable, where you go into two of their sockets, the 9 volt sockets there. And I shall expose the reason for that as well shortly. So, flipping it round. Oh, the other thing T-Rex has is a really annoying blue light. Um, and when I was using the um, this power supply on its own on my desk, um, that was really quite bright. So the fact that it's now underneath the pedal board, so it gives you that light to show you that the power is going to the um, pedal board is actually a good feature. When it's not underneath here and it's blasting out in, <laughs> at your eye level as I had it before, it's a little bit intense. Um, so there we go, that's the pedal board, I mean size wise, um, I did have a big ruler around here so I can measure it. So in terms of height here, 
Um, if I get it round, I'm going to talk in inches. It's yeah, it's about 13 inches um, on the height there for the pedals, and then the full. Yeah, it's 13 by 24, so that's 24 inches across the top. So plenty of room for um, for pedals and groove boxes and anything else you happen to be uh, using on there. So one thing of course is, the other thing is it came with this um, the sort of furry side of Velcro already nicely um, glued on or, or placed on there with these these holes to allow your cables up through there. The other nice thing is once the fuel tank's in there, if you're bothered about that kind of detail, you can see the words fuel tank underneath there. Uh, so purely from a cosmetic perspective. And uh, Ruark as well, they've got these nice clip-in, um, what they're called, I don't know called, lock-in, that's probably a better word for it. So if I put my uh, jack plug in the side there, well, hopefully that's just visible. Yeah, clink, clunk in. So that could be the start of my signal path going in there. And then obviously you've got the output from that on the other side. And then that is firmly locked in. Again, as a, as a person using this as a um, groove box or pedal for synthesizers rather than guitar, having it locked in isn't as key for me because I'm not on the stage having to worry about my signal suddenly um, disappearing out. So, yeah, that locks in nicely and you have to push down a little red, um, there's a little red thing, you push that down and that pulls out. Oh, it's still okay, you know, it's still handy to have the um, cables and things locked in when they're on your desktop, which is I'll be using it in my uh, hobby studio that I've got here. Uh, so generally nice feel, nice solid wooden look. Um, there was one thing, uh, sort of feedback for the guys who made it, there's a big knot there, obviously it adds a nice detail, um, well nice, it's a, yeah purely um, personal view whether you want a big hole out the top there, but yes I've got a hole there probably due to a knot, um, and it just makes, you know, I'm pretending it's a feature even though uh, ideally I would have liked to have ordered one that didn't have the uh, gap on there. So the uh, one bit of damage I've done to it is I have screwed in, um, they're quite difficult to see, uh, but I've, I've screwed in those Allen key style fuel tank connectors that go into that tray that the fuel tank's in underneath. Um, so a little Allen key twisted through there and you can't really see them and they're not going to be visible at all when you've um, got a bunch of pedals on here. So now I shall switch over to um, the bits and pieces I was going to put on there. So one of the things and I have here pre-prepared, I'm not sure yet on my workflow and I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to do things like put this Nord drum on here as well. because This is a Nord drum drum machine that can be triggered um, uh, by one of those sort of rubberized drum mat things. You can use other things to trigger it as well. I use it with MIDI to do my uh, drum sequences. And it's uh, stereo. Um, now it needs uh, DC, uh, DC 12 volt, 250 milliamps is listed on there. And it does have uh, the DC uh, 12 volts on there, which I've connected up. Actually, no, I haven't got it connected up at the moment. Well, maybe I have. Yes, I have. This is connected up. But um, this is one of those ones where it's the, 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 the pole is around the wrong way. So I get no life from there. Um, however, if I use a center positive converter, one of these things, that plugs it in there, that's doing my center positive conversion for me off the back of the DC 12 volts on the fuel tank, and I have life, and I'm now triggering um, the drums on there as well. So, um, another, just a reason to remove another wool wart really from my setup is that, you know, if this was neatly put in there, uh, I'd be away. Now the only thing I will say is that it's quite, it seems to be quite sensitive, so it's not the most ideal of connectors. But this is from a company called Diago. Um, they, um, I've seen these on Amazon and on eBay, and it does the 2.5mm center positive conversion. And there's another reason why I need one of those, and that's this pedal, um, which is the Eventide H9, uh, which is a fantastic pedal. Um, with a whole stack of different effects that you can load on there but again it needed I'm trying to find it it's 9 to 12 volts DC 
and as I understand it, I saw a little comment on the internet that said someone needed, uh, someone said they needed a current doubler. So that's what that cable was from um, uh, from T Rex, the green one, which plugs into two of the sockets on the back of the fuel tank. But again, you need this sensor positive conversion cable again from Diageo, and once that's in there. it boots up and I've got life so I've got the current doubler in there and um, that works fine you know let me turn it active and non-active and all the presets so uh, again another nice feature just to have that on there without all of the extra wall wart needed for the eventide um, it will run off the fuel tank you do need the current doubler cable and you need this um, center positive converter and that's a much nicer fit I don't know what you know I have no idea. It's so annoying, isn't it? The USB is such a good standard on, on computers, but almost every manufacturer, I know Korg are the same. All of the Korg um, uh, Volkers use unusual connector types. So that fits in there, and as I said, I've got power from it, but it is a little bit loose, so not ideal. But it, it does the job, and it does remove the need for another power socket on the wall. So, yeah, removing that. Uh, the other thing the fuel tank comes, let's try and avoid everything falling on the floor down here. The other thing the fuel tank comes with, it comes with these sort of individual um, cables. So you've got the one to one. But they also recommend using this, which it's supplied with, which is like a daisy chain. Um, I think it was supplied with it. Or it could have been another purchase, but I think this was came, this did come with it. And you so you can daisy chain your pedals off the back of there, off the fuel tank as well. So you're not necessarily limited to the amount of sockets, as long as you've got enough juice in there. So I'll pull the eventide off, try and put it somewhere that won't fall on the floor. And um, I'll plug in another, another, another one just to show you what I have to go through once it's, uh, once it's through there. So there you go, fuel tank in there. Um, I mean, this is quite a short cable, but off the back of one of the 9 volt sockets, I can go through. I can feed through either this location or another another spot on there. In fact, I'm going to put the daisy chain in because it's a bit longer. So I'm going to go with the daisy chain in the back of one of the 9 volt sockets. And that could come out of the top there. And then feed several different things at once. And of course all that clutter is sort of out of the way underneath there. So yeah, I've got it coming through there, and then obviously I can put a pedal, so I've got um, this RML. This is a company called RML Retro Mechanical Labs. They do these very nice pedals which have various different retro feel to them, and um, made in Portland. And so here we go, power into the back there, and then that's, that's alive as well. So basically then you could chain it off there, so if I had another pedal, I've got a couple of other pedals just sort of sitting around. So this is the Stereo Reverb from Electro Harmonics. And the reason I got this is because of YouTube. I saw someone with a Korg Volker, I think. Um, I don't know which one it was, probably the keys. And um, they'd stuck it through a cathedral. And they also had another one. Um, there it is. They also put it through a uh, TC electronic flashback at the same time, so they had a sort of chain going. As I understand it, um, this fuzz, in terms of what you'd use it for on a guitar to get that sort of dirty sound that it produces, gritty sort of sound, you'd put that at the front of your chain, and then you'd have reverb, and then I think the delay goes last. Although I've seen people put delays before reverb, and I think other people do wacky things where they put these at the end as well. So you've got the, you know, whatever choice, depending on what sound you want. I think in the world of synthesizers, which I'm using it for, um, you know, anything goes really for whatever sort of sweet sound you try and get out of the combination. But yeah, in terms of the pedal, obviously you'd power up your separate pedals with these. You'd pick a as everybody knows when they're doing these things, they, they pick a nice sequence what they want and then I've been using these sort of curly cables to switch between the two. So again, um, you can probably, if I move that around, just about see, I'll lift it up 
that curled cable type gives you the flexibility to sort of move around a bit but also to bring the two devices up really close to without worrying about the cable getting in the way. So as I sort of filled it up you can see the sort of space I'm taking for these various boxes. So I've got the Nord drum on there. Uh, this is a MIDI random um, music generator called the Future Retro by Zillion or is it the Zillion by Future Retro? I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, it's, I do some, there's some great um, little sequences you can do off this and drive um, the Volkers with that. But again, it's another thing I might put on there. I haven't checked what voltage it needs. Now. Oh, it's 9 volt DC. So that should just work off the back of off the daisy chain. Let's check that out actually. So I'll pull that one off. No, there you go, straight away, wrong connector type. I wonder if this is better connector for it. Ooh, I think it's going to run off again one of these. Um, uh, one of these center positives. Yeah, that's fine. So again, interesting little um, MIDI device, this uh, MIDI controller, but it, it does run off the uh, Diago PSO3 2.5mm center positive converter. That you need to stick on there and uh, just because again um, they're doing it differently why couldn't someone come up with a standard i mean the pedal standard of nine volt um, it's just fantastic and it just works for most things and it'd be great if if people use the same i know with the h9 pedal which i was showing earlier um, this probably takes a lot of juice to keep that running because it's got a lot of stuff in there in there so uh, i can understand why they wanted more more power uh, but that's why I needed the current doubler. Okay, so there it is. Brief overview. Um, sorry I'm not actually putting any sound through any of this, but uh, there we go. Just wanted to show you the, the bench, how I'm trying to use it in my workflow. So I'm going to try and put groove boxes and other bits and pieces on it, uh, plus also the pedals. Now the next thing I may try is I may look for these sort of AB buttons that you can get. Because I'm doing this with synthesizers, I might want to feed different things through on my send channels from my audio device uh, or my audio interface, in which case I don't want to necessarily always be going, oh, now I want to put the Volker through here or I want to put the, the, um, the what I use as a drum machine, the Nord drum too, through something different. And the other thing is I've got a, um, over in here I've got the Keith Macmillan uh, K-Mix and that's quite a small mixer and that would actually sit on here as well, but I don't think I'll put the mixer on here, I'll keep this for pedals and, and devices like this. Okay, well thanks for listening in. It's been a live stream, so sorry that I've dropped something on the floor and I was messing around. So uh, thanks very much for, for listening in and please like and subscribe. Thank you, bye. Now I need to get myself off air. So.